kids 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 we love our kids don't we we believe kids are adorable they are special aren't they and then as parents also we know the things we are supposed to do the things that are expected from us as parents to send them to the best schools to take them around the world on holiday to teach them also culture through traveling right to teach them morals and manners to make sure that we teach and emphasize on them being kinder to people however do we also know that building a close healthy relationship with our kids is very important in short it is very pivotal to their development because what could happen is when they are about making mistakes they could come early and tell you because you're close because the relationship you have with them is healthy now i'm not a mom yet but soon to be of course and i decided to bring a parent and now i wanted to make it a little bit different to bring a guy a guy parent yeah because we know we always have mothers build this relationship with their children but what of guys what of fathers so this is another way to teach our men that it's okay for you to be close with your children especially your daughters when they look up to you and from the first male relationship from you or through you so now we have a family member I don't call this person a guest anymore I call him one of our own because he's accepted me as his and I've accepted him as mine <laughs> he's a family member anyway stick around and we'll be right back so like I said earlier we have a family member a family member to the show of course but you know he's also a family member Nina Kakos and I love the fact that he's a he so guys welcome Noble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you need any introduction anymore. No, not anymore. Like this, this is my family. This is my show. This is Noble Jumbo. <laughs> Odaba. Uh, yes. Odaba. Yes. <laughs> you know when we were speaking, um, while well, I'm glad to be here again mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. well, when you were speaking, you were saying about what the kids we are supposed to do, what we're supposed to do with the kids. I thought we only have children to help us speak and fetch the remote control. <laughs> I thought kids are supposed to help us do the dishes. Cook. I thought they're supposed to help us cook. <laughs> and if you have younger ones, help and take care of the younger ones. Isn't that what they're supposed to be? Because you know, our parents actually use us like that. Uh, yes, <laughs> like I say, it's a kid show, no, learn, no. Like, uh, From where to where? It's not just to uh, Just me. <laughs> I'm remote to control. I say so. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Actually, no, boo. You really inspire me, honestly. As in looking at you, nobody that you, you know, I mean, there's so much I want to say. Okay, would you calm down? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uji is calm. We know it's not common in this part of the world for men to be so involved in the lives of their kids the way you've shown us. Yes. Like almost on a daily basis, you document your interactions, yes. you know, their thought processes, how you're able to navigate that. Because we know these children can ask tough questions, really. Yeah, you yeah, know, nice. how you answer them. Even sometimes you bring it to us, your community members, yes. and then we would comment and say, no, say like this, leave Rex for me, or leave Jazz for me, and yeah. all that, you know. So, really, how come this came about? Did so, you know you were going to be like this? No, I didn't know I was going to be like this, <laughs> but um, I would want to say my, my nature is to be friendly. And uh, I grew up in Aba. I didn't grow up in such a family, but that was a proper Igbo man. He was like straight in his ways and traditional, you know, that kind of thing. But we know uh, my wife is a, f a one out of three girls, so they don't have a male child. And um, yeah. I mean, at some point, maybe the parents wanted a male child or whatnot. But when we started having kids, we had a first girl, we had a second, we had a second girl. And um, a lot of people who knew me as an Igbo man sort of expected me to want like a male child. But the thing is, I have an amazing relationship with my kids. Like I, I have an like I, I drop my kids in school every day. Like my kids can never argue and say that does not love me like you know like i i show my kids that i love them i mean i'm in their lives every day um um i have conversations i have names for them when just me was young i used to call her beans then she grew older so they call her jacks then i used to call her liana leah then she grew older so they call her ellie popping then i call her pops and she answers it so like you know like i have that relationship with my kids like you know so i could go like jay beans jacks pops and people now call eliana popping because I call her Pops and she know, but my kids are amazing. So Jack is five, Ellie is three. 
but they have Elena is the youngest person, but she also tells things to me. She asked me not to call her pops in school because she doesn't want her classmates to call her pops, like you know. And there's uh, something I notice, um, um, yeah. um nobs. Can I call you nobs? Yes, you can call me nobs. Yeah. yeah, there's something I noticed. I'm yeah, I, I. <laughs> I, uh, I see a little bit of gender equality in what you're trying to portray with your girls. If I'm wrong, correct me. No. Yeah, because, you know, somehow, especially the Igbo men from yes. where we are from, because we are both Igbos, yes. we know that, like you said earlier, it is really very important that a, 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 a family unit has a male figure, a male representation, right? Yes. And um, what I see you do subtly, though, or maybe you no, don't even subtle. know. It's intentional. Oh, okay. Yes, you see? So, like so I'm, I'm interpreting it right. Yeah, it's not, it's not so, like, it's intentional for my kids to know that they're equal. It's exactly. Oh. intentional for my kids to know that they, they're not subhuman. It's intentional for my kids to grow up knowing that they are capable of anything that a man can do. So, you know, so I, I teach them that. So, I wash the cars with the keys, water the plants with the keys. I teach them how to open, like, you know, how to turn on the TV. Everything that I, I do, I try to teach them how to do it. I don't say, they don't go like, oh, let's wait for daddy to come and do this. No. They have learned to be a complete person. And there's another aspect again to your parenting that I love. What I notice, again, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. is you you do the things you know you know how to do best regardless of this mindset of this is a woman's job no, in your like home I like, like, you know, like i mentioned to you like even like you know like you know my, my wife works as a brand manager with frisla wanko mm -hmm. and because of that she goes to work every day she's busy at work so i have to like you know fit in because i'm also the like I your job is flexible no it's not about the flexibility of my job but i'm the parent so there's no woman parent or man parent we're just, just both parents and like and I enjoy to do it. So I take the kids to the salon. People are not surprised anymore to see me in the salon. And sometimes it's funny when I go to the salon to drop the kids to come and pick them up later. I go like, oh, um, I'm gonna go there, come pick up later. Maybe mommy should come. They go, oh no, daddy come. It gives me joy. Like you no, know, sometimes when I drive and my kids put like they're sitting behind the car and they put their hands on my shoulder, they tell me that they love me without having to say that I love mm, you, daddy. I like that. You know that kind of thing. And I used to tell trauma that I can, I don't know how much someone loves me, that I know how much the kids love me. Because mm. they constantly say that. When I walk into the room, their face brightens up. When I, you know, like you know, like I'm talking to you, I can see that like in the morning, because our room is on the penthouse and the room is on the next floor. So but when I walk there in the morning and I see Pop, like, Daddy, you know, we have this conversation, then like, we use my, I know, I can tell about how the day works. Like they dress up, we we'll go to school, then when we get into the car, I give them my tablet. For them to like watch anything that they want to watch or play any game before we go from home to, to school. school then um like today um like you know different days like sometimes i take them swimming i take them to jump i take them to birthdays even my wife cannot go i want to take them to birthday they have the best fun because when chuma takes them chuma will not let them play some games that she might think are dangerous i'm just like listen man do you guys want to do this like, so have you ever had people laugh or mock you especially male male like male friends when they say noobs ah now woman you don't become say they do woman thing you know, no something I, like no, that i kind of feel like if if maybe i think people get more sometimes when they feel like they're not working hard on the other aspect of their life so nobody nobody is giving us food to eat so, I, so, <laughs> you know so it's not like i'm using so the, you actually I'm using inspire any, exactly i'm not using the excuse of my kids not to work hard mm -hmm. no, so what no. i'm doing like i'm working hard and taking care of my kids Telling people that it's possible to work hard and be involved. I just have to create the time. You know what I'm saying? I know how the Saturdays will be. My kids walk into the room and they see me, they go like, oh daddy, I expect you to... Because when they come, when I hear them on the staircase, I run to hide behind the door. They know where I'm hiding. But they go like, where is daddy? They're like, hmm, maybe behind the door. So but sometimes when they <laughs> walk up and I'm not behind the door, they really want to walk back out so I can hide behind the door. And it's a routine, and I love it. Oh, I like you know I can. I'm having goosebumps. Yeah, honestly, this yeah, is I, so. I can, I can tell you different stories, like the TV shows. Like I can tell you, they go to bed at 8 p.m. So what happens every 8 p.m. Like they walk up to me, and they go from their Netflix channel to my channel, and they hand over the control to you to watch your own show. So, but what do you see already? You know, by having this kind of deep relationship with your children, what are you receiving from them already? Like what kind of confidence or Personality, do you think you're bringing out okay, of these, so, these so girls? Something funny happened. We went to swim at the um, we went to Eco Hotel for Easter and um, we went to the pool to swim. So, so I was with my daughter and one of her friends, uh, Kobe. They were swimming, and some dude, some guy 
I think it's about like 11 or thereabouts, about were swimming towards them. And my daughter looked at him and said, Go away. I said, <laughs> Go away. Your first or your yeah, second? First daughter, <laughs> leave us. I, it made me feel proud that she can stand up herself, herself without saying, Daddy, tell him to go away. She, I was there. She said, Go away. And the boy was like, uh, What's there? How old are you? Like she said, <laughs> Go away. So it made me feel proud that my daughter can say, Go away without having to ask permission from me. And that's, that's, that's the kind of daughter I want. So, knowingly or unknowingly, this strong relationship and close relationship you have with them is already making them know that they can stand up on their and own. And it's important that they have know, confidence they, they, already. They can stand up on their own. They can say anything they own. There's no question they cannot ask. We don't say, my daughter cannot say that the why. And I say because why has it two branches. And no, you have to break it down until you can no longer break it down. Hmm. Oh. No, boom. every single you have to break it down. Like, you know, it's important that you break it down, it's important that you're there, it's important that you know what when they hold your hands. It's important, like, you know, I told my daughter a few days ago to say, Oh, you know, I have one oil, it's called a liar's oil. So, I say, If I put this cross on, on your forehead, if you lie, it shines. So, you know, <laughs> I, you know, you know so anytime I ask them, you have to tell me the truth, if you don't tell me the truth, your forehead is going to shine. People are going to say, So, I have ways to get things from them. I don't spank my kids, I don't, I'm not, I don't beat them. But I have conversation. I'm not saying you don't have to. I mean, you can beat her. You don't be that. That's up to you. My That's wife, not even what you're saying. Mama feels like you know she's correct. Like she's <laughs> I'm the person who sits down to say. Tell me why you think it was important that you do this. And that's why we love you in this show. Because you know this show is about conversation and relationship. Yeah. So that's why the energy I is rhyming. Because I, I like I to say, have conversations as well. You should have done that. When Jasmine tried to cry. Like, listen, babes. So Jasmine even get jealous when I call Jasmine babes. Because I call my girls babes. <laughs> like, listen, babes. There's no need for you to cry. Speak to me without the tears let me hear you and i can understand and i see that are you going to be angry it's listen daddy is not going to be upset daddy is having a conversation with you so speak to me daddy promise me i'm not angry if i feel if i feel upset about it, i can tell her Jax, i'm not happy that you did this but i also hope that going forward you wouldn't do this because you don't want daddy to be upset but that is not upset right now because we've had this conversation and i hope that we wouldn't have to repeat this conversation sometime again. Okay, but what, what, how do you, you know, think that men that don't have this kind of close relationship with their daughters or their children in general, how do you encourage them to build it? Where do they start from? It's simple. I mean, sometimes, first of all, I just know that you don't know what you're missing. Because mm. when you have a good relationship with your kids, you find the reason to spend more time at home. You have to make it, it, time has to be made it has to be intentional they just don't fall onto your lap mm, i like that you know what I'm like let's say even i need to pick something from the cleaners for trauma and i ask the kids to go with me not because we weren't together in the house but that whole idea of going to dry cleaners people get surprised when we go to pay for things and jasmine takes my car to pay they're surprised that she doesn't have to come to me to ask me for the pain people always go like who's gonna pay like she's gonna pay they were like <laughs> she gives them the card she puts the number she knows where to press accept mm. and i like that you're also indirectly or knowingly teaching them that being a woman does not mean you sit pretty and a man pays for you they, mm. they, they take charge of everything my, my kids have been taught and it's a continuum i'm not trying to say like oh we have it off you got out it's a continuum of thing. course i'm learning on the job of course but i'm also getting better on the job yeah and i can see result clearly and you know i'm doing the english thing but also doing the evil thing you know they, they can move mad i'm like they were now like okay great like, you know. <laughs> so, you know, like, but do they understand Igbo a little bit no not a little bit they're Igbo girls they have to understand Igbo good so they're picking up high five on that they're i like, like that there's no excuse you can't be saying oh, they understand Igbo they're trying they're not they don't have they're Igbo their father is Igbo the only thing that my, my children does not have to speak Igbo so because of that we don't speak Igbo in the house so I have to go the extra mile to speak Igbo to the girls but they also enjoy it they know about like you know how it is oh my mom stayed in Abba so they know grandma Abba they also like you know that kind of thing. They also they know like, how are you in Igbo. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they go, they say they say uh, kachibo, kachibo. Oh, that's so good. Nobu. Yeah, they love they love they love the fact that they're Igbo. No They love they love the fact that they're Igbo. That no, they're no I, I think I need to come for a crash course for, from 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 you, honestly speaking, cheap. because <laughs> you're mommy, no <laughs> like, So I, this thing they say about Igbo men, I'm not I have two girls. You don't want them to go to Harvard. Do you think I'm gonna? Is it, <laughs> I'm kind of that I'm going to send to school. No, it's not. not it. They'll go to Harvard. Yes. Don't worry. And uh, maybe Oxford and Harvard. It is, I'll just bring them to your house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, thank Nobs. So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. I don't even know how much to thank you, but thank uh, you. Gracias. Thank you. This had me as your food. Danke. Das mein Sam.
Dalo, Dalo. I can't speak the one. I can't speak Dalo, Dalo. I'm trying to speak German. I know it's <laughs> Okay, Dalo Nam, Dalo. If you met the movie, ma. I appreciate it a lot, and God will continue to bless you. Amen. Thank you for coming, guys. Honestly, one thing Nobu said here that I'm gonna go away with is, you just have to be intentional. It's not rocket science. It's not just mere wish coming through. It's you putting in the work, knowing that the life and the relationship of your children is important to you, because you know people find time for what is important to them. So when you find building a close relationship with your kids, very important. I, I tell you, you would actually intentionally begin to, you know, move things that are not that important of the way. So you actually use that time to build more stronger relationship with your kids. And of course, in time or with time, you're going to look back and tap yourself on the shoulder and say, I am proud of me for being there for these girls, not just providing, but being there and helping them grow. Because, you know, we'll notice that most people don't know how to have conversations because they were not taught. You know, it doesn't fall from the sky. It starts from the kind of conversation you have with your parents from the house. And then when you grow up, you can actually converse with people without being violent or without boxing your emotions because you're not able to express yourself. So guys, remember to share, like, comment. Tell me how your upbringing was. How did you grow up, right? Did you grow up in a house where you could tell your parents anything? Or did you grow up, grow up in a house where, you know, you could really not tell your parents stuff? Like my own house, it was a little bit traditional. Tell me, remember, it's a safe place, right? We're all learning, learning, and relearning together. Tell me how your upbringing was. Tell me the, the challenges you're having as a mom or as a dad. You never know, someone could give you a best advice that would help your situation. Remember always to hang in there for the very best is next. Till next time, love you. Mwah. Ciao, ciao.